I'm a huge fan of the uh, the Breaking Bad universe, and you snuck mm. in on us on that snuck show. In. That's you. I did. You're, you're the realtor, and the reason why I oh, always really? remembered um, that character was because you know we get the flashback scene where we see Walter and Skyler first buying the house, right? But what was unique is you can tell Walter and Skyler are outside, and the realtor is just kind of waiting. He's kind of like prepping a little bit, and then lets them in. And you can just tell that you were a senior realtor and you even let them come in and kind of do their own thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, one question is, do you partially feel responsible for allowing Heisenberg to get into the neighborhood, which he eventually became the teacher uh, and met um, obviously uh, Jesse? (laughs) Well, since you bring it up, yeah, sure. I'm responsible. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's funny. I, I have to tell you about that scene. Um, an, another brilliant man in stand up uh, to me uh to me the entire series looking from the standpoint of the entire series uh what six years what was it six years something like that yeah they had uh, an a and b so i think it was six, seven years yeah right uh i think it's one of the most brilliant and best tv series ever to me westworld's season 1 uh, not that I disparage in any way the other seasons, but season one, I think, was a mo- one of the most brilliant seasons of television ever because it was unique and exciting and different. But, yeah, that I was a huge uh, fan of the show, you know, from the from the first from the pilot. So I was thrilled to get even that small part. And uh, the interesting thing that they were trying to portray there was that Walter was you know a kind of hip guy you know he had the leather jacket and he was very kind of nonchalant and talking about sandia and you know and i'm like hey you know i gave you that idea don't forget you know and and being a goofball but he was being a real cool customer now there was another scene that we shot because i walk outside if you recall and i said i'll give y'all a chance to you know give you some privacy well they come outside in another scene and we have a little exchange and then they get in his convertible brown bronze Porsche. Wow. And the whole thing, you know, look what he was driving throughout the show. Yeah. But he was driving a Porsche, a convertible Porsche. And that part of that, like Vince Gilligan was saying, is that we want to show that he was a kind of a cool guy, you know, and we never, we never got to see that. And I, I was, uh, I was disappointed just for the character's sake, not because uh, one of my scenes got cut, but I thought it was it was a really cool thing that he was doing. But yeah. you know, time. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder why uh, the the choice, and obviously, like you have to you know cut to a certain amount of time in order to fit the uh, the episode. And um, yeah, I mean that would have been interesting to see, right? Because we're seeing him with the hair; he's very hip. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 a it's bitter. It's, it's sad, right? Because you're seeing what could have been uh, with his character, right? He could have been, if he didn't sell his share um, of the company, obviously, right? So he obviously would have been, you know, wealthy and wouldn't have had to make the decisions. Who knows? Maybe he would have never even gotten the cancer. I always felt like maybe he got the cancer working at the car wash with the chemicals. Yeah. Or stress or, you know, the stress of, of knowing, and, and quite frankly, the, I mean, I would imagine someone that, sold off their ownership in something that would have made them mega wealthy that has to play on your mind yeah every day uh, every day <laughs> yeah every day uh, i've made some bad uh stock choices you know and a few of them that have not left me but you know did, not did, not like him not not that bad i i imagine you were a fan of the uh, better call saul series did you watch that I am not finished watching that. And of course, uh, Patrick Fabian is a good buddy of mine because we did The Last Exorcism together uh, back in 2009, I think it was. Uh, But it's, uh, yeah, it's brilliant too. Anything uh, Vince Gilligan touches really. And then of course, how can you go wrong with uh, Bob Odenkirk and and the the cast and and the crew too, because the crew is a lot of the same people. I... um, yeah, I there's just so much to watch. And I'll be honest with you, I don't watch as much as I used to watch TV itself. Um, so, 
Yeah. No, Patrick they doesn't see this. <laughs> no, he and he was he was amazing. I mean, I don't want to spoil uh, anything. Yeah, about no spoilers. Show, because... but it's it's definitely a slow burn. Um, it's definitely has a different pace, at least in the first few seasons than Breaking Bad. But it's got its own storyline. I know um, a lot of people think it's better than Breaking Bad. Exactly. And we've actually interviewed, um, you know, a few of the um, Better Call Saul cast. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, definitely. Like when I was watching it, you know, you, there's nothing. I would say that everything that you hope to see in a prequel series to Breaking Bad, they yeah. deliver for you and and more and yeah. more. It it stands on its own. Uh, El Camino was really good too. D did you see El Camino? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, I loved it. it. It was, man, what a! I, I thought it was kind of perfect, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't. Uh, I mean, I I truly loved that series and everything about it. it. It it again, I think it is the, you know, and I'm a big fan of, of Brian's. I'm watching uh, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, enjoying that immensely 